Let's do this. Happy Frugal Friday, friends. Welcome to the video. I am so excited about this video because I love the fresh start of a new year. Like a fresh notebook, when you turn that page, that fresh first page, it's that feeling, a clean slate. And I'm so pumped to start No Spend January with you and see how much we can get done. Are you ready for this? Oh, hey. Welcome to my new office space. Traditionally, I don't have an office space, but I have created a little nook in my downstairs. Welcome to the K-Squad office. Let's get down to business. Let's talk about no spend January and let's pick a word slash theme of the year to set the tone for 2022. Okay, let's start with no spend January. The point of no spend January, by the way, this is only my second no spend January. We did it last year and I felt so good about it. And I feel like a lot of you gave me some really good feedback that it was a really great way to start the year. The point of no spend January or any no spend month that you participate in is to, well, especially coming off the holidays, stop the bleed of spending, it is to refocus our energies and our budget on a bigger money goal that we might have. Maybe you want to put some money toward your mortgage. Maybe you need to get a car. Maybe you need to pay off some other debts, credit cards, student loans, personal debts. Maybe you really want to save for that vacation that you've been really wanting to go on. You don't need any more clothes or you don't need to go out to fancy restaurants for a bit because you'd rather go on this vacation. Whatever your financial goals are, the point of no spend January or any no spend month is to spend less so that we can save our money up for something we want more than something we want in the moment. Picking something that you're saving your money for is going to help a lot going through this month. Instead of going out to dinner, you'd be like, oh, maybe I want to spend that $50 on X or geez, those shoes look really great, but instead I'm going to take that money and I'm going to put it toward X. This is all about you and your financial needs and your financial goals and us doing this together just brings us together as a community and helps us reach these goals and start the year off in a good direction, in a positive direction. Let's do this. So let's talk about what happens during a no spend month, or I'm gonna share with you how I handle a no spend month. You can do it exactly like me, or you can tweak it to fit whatever your goals are, whatever you need to do to make this happen, just tweak it to your needs, okay? So what do we pay for? Some people are like, but I need to buy groceries. You're gonna buy groceries. Some people are like, what about my bills? You're gonna pay your bills. You're primarily going to be paying for groceries because we've got to eat and we've also got to make good on all our obligations. So the other thing is your bills. You're still going to pay your mortgage or rent. You're still going to pay your utilities. If you have debts, you're still going to make your minimum payments, of course. If you have medications that you have to get every month for your health, you're still going to get those. And if you've already set up doctor appointments, I don't recommend skipping those. Yes, there might be a copay, but make sure to prioritize your health, of course. So what aren't we probably going to spend on? And again, this is going to be what you make it, but you're going to probably not spend money on going through the drive through for food, probably not going to be going out to dinner, probably not going to be buying stuff online that's like clothes or accessories or home decor or in person, no, sh no shopping sprees of any kind. We're gonna look to do more free entertainment so that January is as low to no cost as possible beyond the regular maintenance of your bills and of course your regular groceries. And now here comes the question, Kate, are gift cards fair game? The answer is heck yes, gift cards are fair game. In my world, they are fair game because you didn't pay for them. So that doesn't mean 
right now, you go load up your Starbucks card with a hundred bucks to get you through January. Nah, 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 nah. Only if it was gifted to you. If someone gave you a Target gift card, if someone gave you a Starbucks gift card as a gift for the holidays or your birthday or whatever, and you still have them, gift cards will not deplete your checking or savings account. They are fair game. Enjoy. Coming out of December. December is so abundant and a lot is going on. There's a lot of preparation to get to the holidays and there's such a ramp up and there's a lot of spending and decorating and gifting and there, there's a lot going on. And I bet even many of you as you're watching this right now, you're exhausted. I'm exhausted. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> and as much as I can pre-plan and space things out, I'm beat right now. And I am looking forward to wiping the slate clean in January, starting fresh, getting my home back to less decorations, less things. There's a lot that comes with the fresh start of the new year and you can set the tone for however you like. Hopefully, Christmas gave you a little fix. If you celebrate Christmas, hopefully you got a little fix. You got some gifts, you got some clothes, I got some books, I got some candles, I got I got some things. If you didn't see my live video, I did a video of what I got for Christmas, if you're interested in watching that. Of course, with the K-Squad, we get chatty, and that went on for like literally two hours, but we had a blast. But if you want to check that out, and you want to just have it on in the background while you're doing other stuff, check out that video. So some of you might be wondering, all right, this sounds like a good plan. I want to not spend so much, but what am I going to do? <laughs> if I'm not out spending money on going to the movies and shopping, like what am I going to do? If you are brand new here, first of all, welcome. You might not be in the habit of doing things that don't cost money. And those of us that have been in the frugal living community for a while, Sometimes we lose sight of it a little bit. We get a little spendy, start spending a little little extra, and we want to reel it back in. And many of you have told me, I want to reel it back in, Kate, for the new year. So let me share with you what I'm going to spend my time doing. Okay, the first one that I'm going to be working on is de-owning, not decluttering. I actually don't even like that term, declutter, although I like kind of what it implies, but I love the idea of de-owning. And I'll get more into that in January. Remind me, if you want to talk about de-owning, there's nothing that feels better to me than getting rid of stuff, honestly, that I'm not using or I don't actually love. So let's talk about that later. But that's one thing I'm going to be doing, going through the home and de-owning everything that I don't find truly useful or that I don't love. That just makes me feel so good. I'm going to be reading. If you saw in that video, I got about six new books for Christmas. And we also have, I have a library card so I could get some books from the library. I'm going to be spending some time reading. I'm going to try to make some time every single day to enjoy reading. I'm a reader. I love to read. And I want to take some time, like these books were gifted to me, so it's not going to cost anything. Or you could go to the library, or you probably have some books in your house that you just haven't had a chance to read yet. If you are a reader, maybe consider doing that. Another thing that you could do, I might do also, but learn how to do something that you've wanted to do totally for free. Where might you ask? YouTube is one definite great resource you could use, but maybe learn something new. If you're a crafty person and like you, you've got some stuff laying around the house, there's a lot of crafty people that have craft stuff that they don't take the time to do it. Is anybody like that? I am not. I am not crafty. I've got no skills, but I know a lot of you are. Uh, are you a knitter? Donna, thinking of you right away. Could you spend some time knitting? Uh, do you have stuff in your house that you have like unfinished projects that you could work on? that you already have the materials for. A lot of us get busy during the year and we have unfinished business to attend to. Maybe that's something you could do. Another thing would be to create. If you have always thought about starting your YouTube channel, now could be the time. Do you like to write? You could write short stories. You could write your first book. 
Do you like to cook? You're still getting your groceries. Could you try a new recipe? You have to eat anyway, so you know, something like that. Could you create something new that you could be proud of and enjoy? Maybe you can draw. I can barely draw stick figures, but maybe you <laughs> could actually draw and create and draw color. I don't know, whatever your creative outlet is, that's what you could spend your time doing. Another great idea is to play. If you have kids, there are games. If you don't have kids, there are still games. My family and I, we've started playing this game called 31, which I also think is called Scat. We're obsessed. We have so much fun with it. And there's just a lot of card games that you could just play with a simple deck of cards that if you don't have a deck of cards, the Dollar Tree has a deck of cards for a dollar for you, but most people have a deck somewhere in their house. The other thing you could do, oh boy, we could exercise for free. We could go for walks if you like to jog, if you like to do your own body resistance exercises in your house. You could do squats, you could do push-ups, you could do burpees, you could do crunches. I'm just saying in the exercise realm of free physical activity, you could go play basketball, you could dance. There's a lot of stuff that you can do completely for free. So that's just a few things that I'm thinking about. But I really want to think about starting the new year off right. And I think every week I'll kind of have a direction. Like next week, I want to talk about our goals for 2022. So if you're not subscribed yet, please hit subscribe. So next Friday, we can talk about our goals for 2022 so that we can really get focused. We can really be clear about what we want this year to look like. Be thinking, what do you want your 2022 to look like. It can be anything you want. It can look any way you want. It can be anything you want, but you've got to think it through at the beginning and think what goals would serve me and my family best? What would I be really proud of? What would be the most impactful for you? What would mean the most to you? The new year is a great time to get a fresh start. If you are in for no spend January, please type in the comments down below. I'm in. And if you don't mind and you want to, share with us, what are you going to save for? What is that money that you're going to save during January going to go toward? This might help inspire the other K-Squad members for like, oh, I really need to save for that too. That's going to be my goal. Okay, so now one of my favorite traditions every single year is picking a word or theme of the year. In 2017, my word was prepare. In 2018, my word was invest. In 2019, my word was impact, and that was the first year I got serious about my channel. 2020 was be brave, and that was the year I bought my house. 2021, the vibe was vibrant, wanted to feel vibrant and alive. And for 2022, my word is simplify. I have this in my house at all times. And sometimes I feel like I don't look at it enough. Keep it simple. I am the queen of complicating things, you guys. I am the queen of overthinking. I am the queen of just exhausting a teeny tiny concept to the ends that you possibly can think about something and I'm tired of it. I want to simplify. I want to simplify my home even more and let me even just tell you what more inspired me with this. Preparing my home for Christmas, as much as I try to get my house simplified, and come from a minimalist perspective and a minimalist mindset because I love minimalism. I love all that it brings to people's lives. And if you're interested in minimalism, please let me know in the comments because I do want to talk more about it in 2022. I kind of have not been talking about it as much in 2021, but it's a topic I'm still passionate about because I feel like there's a lot of benefits from practicing some concepts of minimalism. Preparing for the holidays, as much as it is joyful and a pleasure to do, I just felt like 
wow, if my home were in better shape, like less stuff everywhere, this would have been way easier to do. And I just felt during Christmas time, like I have so much stuff. And I, I don't know if in comparison, I don't really, but in my mind, I thought, wow, if I could simplify this, it would just make life so much easier. And kind of like the path to all things, if I could find the more simple route and simplify things, I feel like my life will have less resistance, less stress, less anxiety. And that is what I want in 2022. I don't want to overthink anymore. I don't want to actually, you know what? Let me tell you a couple things I was thinking about. This is kind of beyond that. These are just like my personal thoughts. I wrote how I want to feel in 2022. This might be an exercise you guys might want to participate in if you want to take this just one step further. I wrote how I want to feel. This is kind of personal, but I'll share it with you. I wrote like my life is my own, free of others' opinions, inner peace, a home that recharges me, refreshed, magical, powerful, honest, unapologetic, lighter, and loving are some of the words. And then I wrote words to describe 2022. Like if we got to the end of 2022, these were some of the words that I was kind of hoping would describe my experience of 2022 and that is abundant let this kind of sounds contradictory but abundant in certain ways but then I wrote less is more and in fact I like the term even more less but better contentment stress-free <laughs> it's good to dream right relaxed refreshed go with the flow I am not go with the flow. I'm the least go with the flow. Happy, clear, being myself, decisive, and better than ever. Boom. Please take a moment to leave in the comments what is your word slash theme of the year. I can't wait to read through all your comments and I can't wait to go through this journey of no spend January with you if you're participating. If you're not and it's a bad month for you, I had one of the K-Squad members saying their daughter's getting married in February, so January is not going to be a no spend. Don't worry about it. She's going to do it in March. She's going to do it another month. But if you're joining us this month, I will be with you every step of the way and I want to know what your experience is as you're going through this and let me know as you go what other things are you finding you're spending your time doing instead of spending money? Thank you so much for being here. Happy 2022. Let's do this, K-Squad. Eyes on the prize. We've got this. See you next video. Bye. Mr. Hannum says hi.